Welcome back to This Week in Costa Rica. Thanks for sticking around, guys. This is segment number two. And uh, all the regular listeners know exactly what that means. I'm calling over to Dan Stevens at the Costa Rican Times. Talk a little bit about the news and blues and bring us up to speed on what's going on here in the great Republic of Costa Rica. Dan, how you doing? I am great. Did you get to enjoy the, uh, the small crowds that came to Hako over the weekend? Small is an understatement, to say the least. Man, I, I, you know, like I said, I, I talked in the earlier segment that I just kind of hold myself up in, uh, in my condo because uh, for me, you know, I'm not a big people person and uh, Easter at the beach is a big people affair. Right, and actually, I, I got to come visit with you this weekend, and just the view from your uh, from your condo and looking down uh, at the, all those people, it was just amazing to me. It was like little ants just running around. <laughs> yeah, well, we are pretty far up here, um, but it was it was an amazing weekend, and it went off pretty much without a hitch. So, so we're happy to see that everyone had a good time, uh, and it was good to see you as well. Look, there's a couple things I want to get to right away here um, because there's a story that's going around that I'm not sure I fully understand, but I know you guys have covered the paper. And uh, there's this woman who has some sort of a miracle cure that's happened to her, and it might elevate uh, John Paul into sainthood or something. What the heck is this? Right. Lori Beth Mora, basically, um, she had a brain aneurysm, and uh, they were trying to treat it at one of the local hospitals in Costa Rica. They sent her home, and, and what she thought was she was going home to die. Mm. And uh, she took a lay. She actually looked at a picture of uh, Pope John Paul II, uh, the late Pope, and um, all of a sudden she was able to walk around. And uh, she went back to the hospital to get, get checked out, and the aneurysm was gone, completely gone, just disappeared. Com- yeah, disappeared, and uh, I cleared the way for um, the late Pope to and be a guest of honor there. Very interesting. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, this, this is, again, this is a miraculous sounding story. Uh, of course, we're super happy for her. That's amazing. So, um, you know, between you and me, I don't know, <laughs> but Hey, yeah, yeah. I, I have my own thoughts on this. I'm really happy she's alive and that she made it through it. But, um, I don't know if uh, it was Pope John Paul II taking the aneurysm out, but, uh, you know what? We'll give him credit for it. Hey, whatever works. That's what I'm saying. Look, I, you know, I'm a big swimmer. I jump in the ocean. I like to bodyboard. I like to do all that kind of stuff. And uh, aside from stingrays, I get a lot of people who email me. They ask me questions about, you know, swimming and living in Costa Rica on the coast. And the biggest concern a lot of people ask is like, what's the shark situation? Uh, Maybe naively, I keep saying, look, you know, shallow waters, nothing to worry about. There's no sharks really out here close to the coast. But uh, I, I turns out I might be wrong. Well, you would think that most of, most of the sharks have been killed by the Chinese, but um, <laughs> uh, there, it seems that some of them are actually be, become close to shore. But uh, sharks usually feed at night, uh, but there was a shark sighting uh, about a week and a half ago uh, in Playa Langosta in northern Costa Rica. And um, what it was is there's, there's an area called the wreck, which there's a bunch of sunken boats um, where they, a lot of uh, sea life uh, kind of, I guess, gather. And uh, it's a good place for these sharks to feed. It's really in a secluded area. It's hard to get to. And uh, I think it was a little bit blown out of proportion by YouTube, which a lot of things are. Sure. But, um, it, it, I mean, there's really nothing to be afraid of. It was, uh, I think it was a white tip shark um, that, uh, that was scavenging for food in the area. And most sharks feed at night anyway. So as long as you're not going in the water at night and uh, have like a cut, <laughs> so I, you're going to be pretty good swimming in Costa Rica. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been living here eight years. I've never heard of a shark attack. I've heard about a lot of crocodile attacks, uh, but that's that's about it. I think, you know, interestingly enough, because a lot of the, the people who write me ask me about snake bites as well. Uh, and I think that there's something ridiculously low, like one snake bite reported death since 1980 in, in this country. So... You know, as crazy as the wildlife is here, uh, and as concerning as it might be that there's snakes and crocodiles and sharks and what have you out there, uh, the, the reported, at least, incidence of these things is, is super, super low. Right. And, I mean, you're more likely to, to get dengue down here than you are to get uh, the attack by a shark by, by leaps and bounds. So it's really nothing really to worry about down here. And if you see fins in the water, just be smart and don't go in. Yeah, it's the micro world. It's those scorpions and mosquitoes and stuff that you need to concern yourself with. You know, thinking about scorpions and sharks and all these things, it, it just kind of makes me think about the new government that's coming in. <laughs> <Is> there an, <laughs> you know, there's an inauguration coming up, and uh, here we go. What's going on? The new Chinese stadium that will be hosting uh, the uh, on um, the transfer of power from Laura Chinchia, 
the, one of the best presidents of Costa Rica of all time, I'd have to say. Yep. Um, a little sarcasm there. No. Um, and, uh, and, and what they're going to do is they're going to have about a $300,000 um, uh, inauguration ceremony, and it's uh, to transfer the power from uh, Chinchilla to Luis Guillermo Solis. And we'll see. It's, uh, it's going to happen on May 8th at 10 p.m., and there's going to be cultural presentations. And if you want to go down there and check it out, it uh, should be fun. I'm going to be uh, at home not watching it on TV. Fair enough. You know, the only thing I think I'm going to do at the National Stadium is Paul McCartney's in town. Uh, maybe I'll see if I can get down there and, uh, and catch that show, get some scalped tickets or anything. I, I was dumb. I, I didn't think ahead of time. I didn't buy my tickets. I forgot to put it on my calendar. So if, if I'm going to see somebody of any importance, I think it's going to be Sir Paul this year, not, uh, not the new president. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, we spoke a little bit in the preamble here today, Dan, that um, it's now kind of the official end of the high season and the beginning of the rainy season, if you will, or the green season, whatever you like to call it. Um, but really, you know, you and I have spoken about this in the past. It's it's kind of our favorite time of year. I love rainy season. It's uh, everything cools down in the afternoon. You got the afternoon showers, which is which is beautiful. I mean, if, if, for me, you sit there and you work in the morning, and then in the afternoon, about two thirty, three o'clock, or one o'clock, whatever time the afternoon showers come, you get to sit there and go. You know what? I'm going to take a nice little hour and a half nap in this rain. Yep. <clears throat> you wake up and there is cool weather you get to watch the sunset and everything's good and uh the beaches are less less uh there's less people at the beaches the tourism stuff if you want to go go on some atv tours or experience well everything at costa rica has to offer you get you're going to get better deals and um i i just love this time of year you know i'm a big hiker as well um you know as much as i love the beach and swimming that sort of thing i really enjoy going up in the mountains i mean there's good mountain trails there's incredible national parks here uh, for me to slap on a backpack and go to the mountains is amazing. But when it's the, the high season or the dry season, it is so hot and it can be so dusty, like even at those higher elevations. And, you know, it's a little bit interesting because we get so little rain during that time period that everything starts turning brown and uh, everything looks like it's dead. And uh, it doesn't necessarily make for, I, I guess it's a matter of opinion. This is very subjective, but it doesn't make for the best looking landscapes. Whereas in the rainy season, uh, everything's just green and lush and blooming and beautiful. Uh, and it just makes everything amazing. Like the air is thick and rich with like this jungle aroma, you know? So for me, uh, that's the time of year I like to hike and, and get out there in the mountains and enjoy the greenery. Yeah, it, it's beautiful. And uh, I love green season. And, I mean, the last three weeks where it rains every day, all day, uh, then those get kind of annoying, when you're, especially when you're trying to, to get to town and you've got uh, wet socks and shoes or your yeah. flip-flops are a little slippery. But other than that, it's, it's a wonderful time of year in Costa Rica, and I actually recommend people coming down during this time because they're going get, to get better deals. I would agree. Yeah, October is usually the time of year that you want to kind of avoid, uh, you know, not necessarily avoid the country, but definitely avoid having to, to run a lot of errands and do a lot of things in the middle of the day out there. Uh, because like you said, there's a, there's a stretch where the rain just never seems to quit, and it's like someone is dumping a bucket of you know water from the sky on you constantly. It's it's unbelievable <laughs> the volume of water that happens. But the other thing that's interesting too during this time of year uh, is that it really helps the the electric grid, you know, because uh, the majority of, of Costa Ricans' electricity is coming from you know hydroelectric plants, and uh, the more water that we have on reserve and flowing through the country. Uh, you know, the more reliable and steady the electricity is here. You know, it's funny, a lot of people who listen to this program or think about coming down to Costa Rica, they don't necessarily realize uh, how irregular the electricity can be here and how often the, the power goes out. Uh, I, can, I can speak to Hako here. You know, here we have uh, backup generators outside the studio. We have battery generators inside the studio. You know, so we have kind of this belt and suspenders way of keeping things going. But for the most part, uh, in Hako, the power goes out almost on a daily basis, flickers, brownouts, all kinds of things like that. But it's not nearly as bad in the rainy season. Yeah, no, it's not bad. Actually, I have my kayak being delivered uh, the first week in October, so I'm good. <laughs> okay, so that's how you're going to get back and forth to wherever it is you go. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, it's interesting, <laughs> and, and it reminds me of something as well, because, you know, not to get off on a tangent with electricity, but, you know, a lot of people ask about the electricity down here and having uh, the electrical equipment and that sort of thing, and obviously I'm surrounded by it every given day. And uh, one of the strongest recommendations I make to a lot of people is go out and get yourself. Uh, I use a, a company called Triplight. They're not a sponsor. Uh, but they do battery backup and uh, power regulation because 
really what you need in this country, especially during these times. It's not necessarily the blackouts that's hard on your equipment. It's the brownouts and those little moments where everything kind of just dims. Uh, that's really, really hard on your gear. But if you have a, you know, a power conditioner and backup battery, it's great because it acts as this buffer between that uh, electric grid that Issei is providing and the equipment keeps things steady, keeps things safe. So probably the best, I, I think they brought a hundred bucks a unit, but you can run a bunch of stuff off it. Probably the best hundred bucks I spent at, uh, at Price Mart are those things. Yeah, you, you get those. And I mean, and it is almost a necessity to have surge protectors on everything during this time of year as well. Yeah, there's absolutely no doubt about it. All right, Dan. Well, this has been great as always. I guess we're going back into into normal now here in Costa Rica, and uh, I, I'm sure things are heating up there over at the paper. I understand that the internship program is starting to get pretty hot, uh, and you're getting a lot of inquiries for the next coming months. So, uh, you know, we got a minute or two to play with here. I'd like to know what's going on with that. Yeah, what we're doing is uh, July 7th is going to be our uh, basically one of our first intern programs. We've got uh, at least four interns coming down, possibly more. Wow. Uh, we're looking. Uh, it's, it's actually pretty exciting. We've got some people coming from NYU, uh, Arkansas, I mean, just all over the U.S. And uh, we have also have a couple of inquiries from Ireland, et cetera, coming in November. But uh, we're really pumped up about this because, uh, for me, it, 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 I want them to get the full gist of what journalism is here in Costa Rica with the radio with you with the, with the newspaper with the Costa Rican Times and we're actually going to be implementing video here at, with a video studio. Amazing. Stick around guys. we got Holly Lynch coming up. Thanks so much Dan. Right, thanks. Thanks.